So, um, just to give you a very short presentation of the context I'm coming from, uh, I work at the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at Linköping University in Sweden. And this faculty was established in 1986 when we started the sixth medical school in Sweden. Uh, the whole program was earlier divided between Uppsala and Linköping. Uh, and to convince the politicians and the de decision makers that we would have this program, uh, we did something totally new in Sweden. We started to have problem-based learning, integration of subjects instead of reading one subject at a time. We have interprofessional learning, early patient contacts, the students meet the patient already in the first semester. And we have a community-oriented uh, learning uh, approach. We are today uh, seven programs at the faculty and we have 400 new students each semester at two different campuses, one in Linköping and the other one in the neighboring city, Norrköping. Um, if you want to read about this, there's a publication from 2008 about how we succeeded in establishing this new type of education because this is common for all the programs, the, the cornerstones that we have. Over the years, the interprofessional education has developed from 10 weeks in the first semester into three, three different modules. So today it's four weeks in semester one, two weeks at the later third of the education about quality improvement knowledge, and the yellow one is two weeks in the clinical training ward where the students uh, form teams from the different programs and they take care of a number of patients in a real ward setting uh, and give, uh, get a real sense of how it is to organize a team and make it work and take care of the patient and have the patient in focus. Um, so today is eight weeks. Uh, when we had the most, we had 12 weeks. So that was like 10% of the three year program of, of a nurse, for instance. Uh, we also have simulation activities um, and we have a master's program that is interprofessional where you have the different disciplines but also interprofessional uh, courses um, in the faculty. And if you want to read more about this, uh, we have this uh, brochure that is available online and you can read how we organize it. So this is a very short summary of how you, I usually introduce uh, our interprofessional education at the faculty. And once uh, we had a visitor uh, and the host was working in what we call a, a national knowledge center at our university with the aim of assembling and disseminating knowledge about violence and other abuses against children. Uh, and she invited me for a conversation, how could we do interprofessional education for those who are involved in child abuse? Um, she could describe to have a, a practice where the prosecutor, one or two people who are really specializing in child abuse, police officers that is also specializing, working together with the uh, social workers who are academics that had uh, graduated from university with social, social science. And they are around 100 people in 13 different municipalities. They are not specializing in this topic of child abuse. And they could see it's a problem to really get this team uh, collaborate in a, in a very well organized way. And to this team is also forensics, uh, medical expertise like pediatrics or others. So it's a very diverse team around this child, depending on the needs of the child. So we started this discussion, discussion what could we do um, in regard of interprofessional education? At the same time, interestingly, the university was uh, obliged from a national level to introduce a learning objective around knowledge about men's violence against women and violence in relation, uh, close relationships, hence uh, domestic violence. 
And uh, together with this conversation of the Child Abuse Center, we started to think, how could we do this as an interprofessional learning activity for our undergraduate students um, that would be beneficial and uh, really uh, support the, the learning around this since they have to somehow collaborate with others in the future profession. So that is the question I would like to discuss in this um, uh, webinar. Thank you.